February 18th, 2014 meeting of the City Council of the City of Springfield, Illinois is called to order. Do you rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Edwards? Here. Alderman Simpson? Here. Alderman Turner? Here. Alderman Lesko? Here. Alderman Canman? Alderman Joe? Here. Alderman McMiniman? Here. Alderman Tylan? Here. Alderman Dove? Here. Alderman Griffin? Here. Mayor Houston? Here. Okay, the first item on our zoning uh, agenda is docket number 2014-001 for property located at 1028 uh, North 9th. The petitioner is Interjet Singh. The present zoning classification is the B1 Highway Business Service District, section 155.033. The requested zoning relief, a conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.033, conditional permitted uses in B1 Highway Business Service District, and section 155.210, package liquor sales and a variance of section 155.210, package liquor sales to allow package liquor sales within 100 feet of a residentially zoned lot. The Springfield Salmon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is approval. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is to accept the staff's recommendation to approve the petition for conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.033, conditional permitted uses in B1 Highway Business Service District, and section 155.210, package liquor sales and a variance of section 155.210 package liquor sales to allow package liquor sales within 100 feet of a residentially zoned lot. Chair will entertain a motion. I want to make a motion to accept and do an amendment to, we don't want to sell the single <coughs> serving uh, alcohol. So to amend to, for passage with the exception of single serving bottles is that the 40 ounces? Is that what you're talking about? You're talking about the beer, the half pints, okay. pints. We're talking about the single servings, the the shots, the airplane bottles. Right. So like one seven, I think that's 175 milliliter. Right. I'll second that. Okay, let me repeat it and see if, if we can can, can uh, get this 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 down. The uh, motion and second to accept the uh, planning and zoning uh, commission's recommendation to approve the petition for conditional permitted use pursuant to section 155.033, conditional permitted uses in the B1 Highway Business Service District and section 155.210, package liquor sales with a variance of section 155.210, package liquor sales to allow package liquor sales within 100 feet of a residentially zoned lot with the exception of sales of thing of uh, alcoholic beverages of under 1.75 milligrams. Is that I, I think it's 175 milliliter. It's, milliliter, milliliter. it's commonly called airplane bottles by the liquor industry when you're ordering them. Three ounce bottles. <laughs> what, uh, Not that I would know. But. Not that you know at all. <laughs> Mayor, I think we're trying to duplicate what we did for the um, uh, mobile when we approved the zoning for the mobile station on MacArthur. We need to have exact. Yeah. Correct? Yes. So why don't we just use whatever that language was that we used at that time? Well, we need to be clear. We need to be a little clearer in terms of what. Uh, I, I um, thought it was 40 ounces and the airplane. Yeah, we on the mobile on MacArthur, we got rid of the single serve beers, the single serve 40 ounce or less beers, and the airplane bottles. I think. I don't remember. That was back when it was Alderman Cimarosa or Alderman Mahoney. Correct. I think they got rid of half pints too and left pints alone. Well, perhaps the zoning, our zoning, Mr. McLaughlin, who was in the zoning office at that time, might uh, know what that criteria was that was used at that time. But that that's moot. It's not what the alderman. That's not the motion he made. He was specifically looking at. The clerk pointed out a three ounce bottle of hard liquor. <laughs> Frank? Yeah. This oh, right, let's go. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> the single serving uh, hard liquor bottles is what we're looking for. 
a uh, single serving of wine, single serving of beers. Okay, so the beers, uh, 40 ounces and below. That's the motion, and we have a second. Is that yes. Right? Now he's changed it. Okay, so we have a, a motion and second. 40 ounces and below. Yeah. 40. Okay, 40 ounces and below. Okay. Uh, half pints are, are below, and single serve uh, wine is that? Yes. Okay. Good. Second. Okay. Discussion. Uh, yeah. Mr. Mr. Gates, are you representing? Yes, I'm representing the petitioner. This is all news to me. Okay. Well, if you'd like to make any? We don't have a uh, problem. As I said, this is news to me. I didn't know this was what the motion was going to be. Um, we don't have a problem with the single serving mm -hmm. hard yes, liquor. That's no problem at all. But so I'm not sure. Are we? Were you also talking about the? The 25 ounce cans, like they comes by single service beer, so mm -hmm. it's uh, yes. it's 25 ounce. That that's what we're talking about. I mean, we don't mind like 50 ml, so we can sell like a 20, <coughs> 20 pack 50 ml. This comes in like packages, you know. Right. I mean, the only thing we don't have to sell like a single like a 50 ml, like break up the 12 pack yeah. and give the like 50 ml to like we used to do the other store. So we uh, I really don't mind that we can sell like a 12 pack 50 ml, or we can sell like a tall can beer comes uh, 25 ounce. So this I guess is the, how, this is how we sell. It, yeah. So the question is, is a 25 ounce? Yes. Is that one of the things that you're asking that we be restricted from selling? Yes. Yes, 40 ounces or less. 40 ounces or less. Of any kind of alcohol. single container for can beer. Okay. beer. What about so hard? Like this uh, forty ounce and Okay. All right. Okay. Fair Further discussion. I, Mayor, Gordon I Cameron. Yeah, I know this was kind of controversial. A couple of the neighborhood organizations had opposed this uh, when it came out, but I, uh, particular Enos Park, Lincoln Park, uh, which. Uh, mostly is in Ward 5, even though this facility is in Ward 4. But I'd like to commend uh, both neighborhood organizations on being, trying to be reasonable. I think, you know, this is a, a great example of how uh, two sides that come into uh, a situation with opposing viewpoints can uh, reach a compromise that works out, I think, in the best interest of both in the end. We have we have a business there that will continue rather than an empty building or an empty gas station and we're protecting the neighborhood by preventing the sale the single serving sales uh, which is what the neighborhood associations were most concerned about so i think it's an excellent compromise alderman let's go and i thank you for the work you did on this further discussion hearing no further discussion all those in in favor of the motion vote yes those opposed vote no voting is now open Motion passes. I'm trying to vote. Okay, 9 1. Okay, the next item on the zoning agenda is docket number 2014 002 for property located at 1737 North 14th Street. The petitioner is Margaret and George Richard. The present zoning classification is an I1 light industrial district, section 155.040. The requested zoning relief reclassification to I-2, Heavy Industrial District, Section 155.041, and permitted conditional permitted use pursuant to Section 155.041, conditional permitted uses in an I-2, Heavy Industrial District to allow the petitioner to dismantle cars for processing and recycling. The Springfield Salmon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is denial. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is to deny the petition as submitted. Chair will entertain a motion. I'm going to make a motion to allow the petitioner uh, his desires to dismantle cars for processing and recycling. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and second to uh, allow the uh, petitioner uh, to. Um, approve the, and Alderman, I'm not, not putting words in your mouth, the uh, petition as presented? Yes. Further discussion? And no further? Uh, Mayor? Yes. Are there any uh, objectors here? Uh, do you wish to comment? Yes. 
My name is Tom Adams. I live at 1736 North 14th, directly across from him. I used to own the property when and had a tow company in there. I was never allowed to dismantle my cars or anything or even leave them outside the lot. I had to keep them inside. He does it, was doing it before he even tried for the zoning. He had so many cars parked out there, it made our whole neighborhood look bad. I had a, other neighbors up here at the zoning meeting, but they couldn't make it tonight. There's a lot of them in the neighborhood that's against it. They don't want a junkyard or dismantling facilities across the street from their house. Afraid it's going to bring down the value, value of their house. Yeah, I'm, I'm against it. I mean, it, it even went on after the zoning hearing. How many from the neighborhood were at the uh, zoning and, hearing? Uh, well, me and my wife was here. Uh, there was one, two, three, four or five other people was here. And they're all directly across from the property there. Is, is Mr. Mayor, is, is the petitioner here? Okay, yes. I just wonder. Okay. Okay. Alderman Edwards. Is this an increase in the classification? Is this a heavier industrial use? Yes, so yes it is. If, if, mm -hmm. it, if it wasn't going to be cars dismantled and we grant this and it doesn't work out, it's classified as I-2. Now what can be put in there? If, if, if they Does say they anything? this it, doesn't work out, we're going to do something else, what can be put in there with an I-2? You, you could have a chemical plant. You could have warehousing. It's, it's the most intense district that we've got. And how close is your house to it? I, I'm, my house is probably 50, 75 foot away from it. Roman Simpson? Mr. Adams, and you say you were never allowed to. I was never allowed to do that. Did you I've had, request I've, it? If I let weeds grow up around my fence, I got a notice from the city to get them cut down. All summer long, he has let weeds and trees grow up along his fence and never cut them down. So 5 2 three. denies. Mayor. Alderman Cameron. Uh, first to the zoning administrator. It, I think Alderman Edwards said that he's trying to get it, that it is I-2 now, but it, no, the, it's I-1. Yeah, yeah, it's I-1. So the question is, uh, I'd like to know not what it, what could be done under I-2, but what could be done under the current zoning, I-1. He could have a tow yard in I-1, and you could have warehouses. And do, do, do you or the witness know what the property's being used for right now? Yes, it's a tow company. Oh, it's a tow company. Okay. So he stores cars there, but you uh, you think it's okay for him to store the tow the cars there, but you don't want him to dismantle the cars. As long as he keeps it neatly ordered, which he don't do that, it's it's got a pile of junk right in the middle of his lot. If you look through his gate, drive-in gate, you can see a pile of junk sitting right there. Would. Uh, would that, what he's describing, be a violation of the zoning law or some other ordinance? Uh, yeah, it'd be. He's only allowed to have a tow lot there. He can tow cars there and be picked up or hauled away. That's it. So if he's storing junk, why uh, isn't hasn't legal. he been cited for that? He has. Or been. Has, That's why he's here. he has been. Yeah. And under the under, what the current zoning, he cannot dismantle a car. That's right, the, but he but he has according to the witness he has uh, junk piles there not just uh, cars in their uh, together state is that correct yeah he all, he has also dismantled vehicles outside of his lot too he had three semi trucks parked out there he was dismantling through the summertime I guess my question would be to Alderman Lesko why are you uh, changing and going against the recommendation of the Planning Commission. And well, I want to allow him to be able to dismantle the cars inside his fencing, not on the outside, but inside the <coughs> of his tow lot. Uh, he doesn't sell parts. It's not a junkyard. He simply dismantles them and ships them out to recycling. Is as the petitioner here? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to address I the council? This Ma'am. 
I'm Denise Adams. I live at 1736 North 14th Street, across from his tow lot. Um, my property is valued at $75,000, and uh, both of my properties are, and I want to get $75,000 out of them, you know? Uh, they tow cars in and uh, in whole, in the inside, and then they take old cars and bring them out and start scrapping them out there. Uh, I've taken several pictures of them and <coughs> you can see them on my phone. Uh, I've taken several pictures of them outside of the lot. They have another tow company that is parking cars outside the lot. Uh, uh, they're taking tires off and storing them in the back of the lot uh, and in the front of the lot so we can see the tires in the lot. Um, Oh, and they park on the wrong side of the road. I, the lot is here. I'm across the street, and I can't get out of my driveway because their truck is parked right there. I can't get them to move or anything else. I told Nick that the driver that he needs to move his truck, he won't do it. I don't know if somebody said something to him or not, but. You know, this is crazy. I can't even hardly get out of my driveway. I have to not go anywhere to be able to get out of my driveway. You know, this is crazy. I can show you the pictures on my phone too, that they're outside the lot. So if you need to see them, I will show you them too. Mayor, could I Mayor, ask your question? I, th I think all of them are Sure. And then. Actually, my question's for zoning, so go ahead. Uh, are you saying that uh, the petitioner is uh, putting car parts on your driveway blocking you no, in? No, 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 no. Their tow trucks are blocking in, out in the street, so <coughs> blocking my you're saying he's <coughs> pathway to get out. His tow truck parks in front of your driveway. And the wrong side of the road. The lot's over here, and he's going right here, parking on this side, and he's going this way. Yep. Well, have you, have you called the police or asked the petitioner to do anything about that? No, because... Uh, uh, I asked Nick to the, the driver, and he didn't want to cooperate with me. So, you know. So you asked him to move your his tow truck to yes. get your car out, and he said, "No, I'm yes. not going to move it." Yes, exactly. Yes. <clears throat> you know, the, it's <clears throat> bogus because I can't get my car out. He has. Um, um, he got woke up late at, or late at night, uh, about 12 o'clock at night, and he couldn't go back to sleep for about an hour because uh, they were sitting over there running trucks and everything else. And that was Saturday night, you know. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Adams. Um, you mentioned that he had been cited. Is that the only time he's been cited and then he came in for the relief after the citation or has he been cited multiple times? 
He's been cited a few times. He cleans it up and then. But it's the same offenses. It has been lately, yes, this year. For the discussion? I'd like to uh, ask a petitioner to come forward, please. Mr. Richards, if you just state your name and address for the record. George A. Richards, 2951 Winter Road. Thank I you. I also own the property, 1737 North Fork. And I guess my question is, were you aware of the the tow trucks blocking their drive? Actually, the other neighbor at the city hearing mentioned it, and I went over and told her if she ever had a problem with them doing it, to come tell me. And you notice she's not here because we sat down and we solved the problem. Her problem was that and the dog barking. I'm not getting rid of my dog. What hour, hours are operation? Our tow operation runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The date that is questioned was Valentine's Day. When we had the snowstorm, the city called for a snow emergency. Yes, our trucks were running late at night. We were towing city police cars. We were bringing them in off the street so the plows could work. Okay. As far as dismantling cars, what are the hours that you do that? Usually we do it during daylight hours only. And are they contained within the fencing? The majority of the time they was, the during demo derby season is Illinois State Fair. We put cars together to wrap off for breast cancer. Those cars do get moved outside a lot, but those cars run, they're drove out, they run, they drive in. <coughs> and during loading and unloading of those cars, there's multiple rollbacks there and multiple car transporters there because we put anywhere from 10 cars to 35 cars together for that show. My question next is to uh, zoning. Is there a way that we can grant him an ordinance or a, uh, a variance just for dismantling the cars? And then if the property sells, that variance goes away. That's what the conditional permitted use is for, correct? Okay. That's my only ask. I don't want I-2. I don't want full yeah. I-2. Okay. You have, you have to have the I-2 with the conditional permitted use for taking the cars apart. Okay. Then I want to I wanna change my motion to that to leaving the zoning at I-2 and give a conditional uh, permit variance. Um, I will leave it at I-1. I-1 right now, we need a reclassification to I-2 in order to give the CPU oh. for the dismantling. That's the reason why there's a request for an I-2 up zoning. Okay, is there a way to give the I-2 with that variance and then if yeah. they go to sell the property, no, it goes away? reclassification of zoning stays. An I-2 would stay. My understanding is an I-1 is I can also do the dismantling with a variance on an I-1. Means that the only thing I want no. to do is the actual no, dismantling. No, you cannot dismantle unless it's an I-2 with a CPU for dismantling. That's the only way to do dismantling. So then to then with, the, with, use. with the variance on there, would they then, when they sold the property, would it be just a straight I-2? zoning or would it still have the conditional permitted use for dismantling cars that runs with the land so if he sells it if you grant an i2 with a cpu for dismantling if he sells the property it goes out of business the i2 and the cpu for dismantling stay with the land it means the next owner can do anything in i2 or you can also do i2 with auto dismantling You want to hold this? Hold it, work it out. <clears throat> Pardon me? Well, so what, what classification yeah. is auto dismantling <clears throat> under then? I-2. I-2 with a CPU. CPU. Alderman Griffin. Uh, a couple quick things is I saw that when you could talk to Mr. Richards, originally they were talking about maybe putting it to an hour, and you didn't really seem like you had a real problem with that. I don't have a problem Okay, with that. so that's something you may want to consider to make it a little more palatable. And one of the things I read in there that, that concern is, devil's advocate, if you don't get this, what do you do with them cars? What do I do? Yeah. There's devil's advocate. You just got a junk junkyard because I get to pile the cars up because, you know, that's the devil's advocate part. I have money invested in these cars because I tow them in. There's one car sitting there, just the tow bill, not the storage, is over $200. And that's my, 
<laughs> I'm saying is that's my concern is if I leave if you don't have anything to do with these cars, they're not going anywhere. I'm not gonna take a loss of money on them. Right. You know, and that's basically it I'm gonna, you know, basically what we've been doing is they said about the tires, according to EPA rules, tires can be stacked outside as long as they're still on the rim. You go check all them tires, they're still on the rim. Why? Because the guy that hauls the tires out and doesn't doesn't have room for them. Because I have a licensed tire hauler coming in to pick up the tire and he takes them out. He's a tow line. But I don't take and have tires sitting around my lot, not on the rim. If they're off the rim, they're stored in the three storage tray. The majority of the metal gets put into the three storage tray. Only the motors are still out there and we're cleaning them up. But it's kind of hard to clean them up when we're running the trucks 24 hours a day during the snow emergency. Oman Edwards, then. So, Oman Turner. So you can't do. I, so. I, I kind of understand what you're saying. You get more money if you salvage them, or uh, for parts. No, we don't want to sell parts. Well, then why don't you just get a certificate of salvage and leave them as a whole, and and do it that way without just just mailing them, and you won't need a different classification. Because as we do as a whole, a Ford Escort weighs a thousand pounds. Right. All right. Right now, that's paying two hundred dollars. Like I said, I have a You're not going building. to get any more for it if you disassemble it. Yes, I will. As parts. No. That's what I just... No. As recycles. Because the Ford Escort also has a catalytic converter sitting underneath the car that is worth $80. It has four tires on the car. <coughs> if the tires are good, I can sell each one of those tires for $10 a piece. I didn't think in the state of Illinois you could sell used tires. I sell them to a recycler. A licensed tire hauler. <coughs> I... Yeah, I, I caught your comment where you said there's no way to get rid of them, and actually there is if you there just is, get a salvage a certificate. I, I think that's what you're looking at here when you say you wouldn't have anything to do with the business. First of all, you can tow, then you can get a salvage certificate and dispose of the vehicle. And granted, you're not going to get as much money, but you can still dispose of the vehicle. I can dispose of the vehicle <coughs> now. You just got a piece of property because. I made $80,000 disposed of them my way, which is taking the alternators out. Yeah, but the problem you got is it's not certified. You're, that piece of property yeah. is not certified to do what you've been doing. Yeah. And it's certified to tow. It's certified to get salvage certificates for them and dispose of them whole. And when I first started, I was under the understanding I could take and do But it. that's not our fault. So once I got told no, I came and board, board to get it changed. <laughs> I don't want to be a junk yard. I just want to process the cars to recycle them. And the only way I could actually show you is to take you out and show you how the different parts. I, the I car. know how it's done. You know, a lady mentioned recycle or rebuilders. I'm a licensed rebuilder too. If that car needs more than a window crank on it to rebuild it, I junk it. I can take, and take the cars to Dick Taylor and have him do the body work to them. It's not worth all the money that I would have to put out to get the little bit back. No, no, I understand how it works. What I'm saying is you said you don't know what you do with the property, but your property is worth what it's worth for a tow yard and to salvage the cars as whole. That's what you have. What you want to do is have to do it different than what you're doing, and that takes a different classification. Yeah. And that's that's what we're voting on because if you go away, that classification stays with that neighborhood. It doesn't go away. I'm reluctant to give a higher industrial use inside our corporate city limits. It's not <coughs> doing what you're doing. It's just once it's there, it's tough to get rid of. Well, the only thing that I can't understand is that whole area is I want. Right. It's not I-2. It's I-1. Yeah. Those houses are actually I-1. If those houses right now, unless it's changed, if one of those houses was to burn more than 50% and had to be torn down to be rebuilt, they cannot even rebuild it. I'm not arguing over the I-1. I'm, I'm no. telling you the I-2 becomes the problem because you can have a chemical plant. And have, <clears throat> it can go beyond what you want to use it for. And that's... 
as we've been on the council, I think that's always been a problem for the council, is to give a heavier use industrial area inside our corporate, corporate city limits. And that's, it's not the fight of what you're doing, I think it's so much of the fight of a heavier use, industrial use, inside our corporate city limits. Alderman Turner? And I, and I guess my concern is the number of violations that are occurring on your property and their repeat violations. So it seems that you get a violation, you clean it up, but then it doesn't sink in that there was a problem, so it, you get another violation and it's, you know, well, and then see, we have to see. One violation I did get and I cleaned it up and I called the city and said, come out and look, it is cleaned up. And somebody took and dropped a car right out in front of my building. And I'm sitting there walking in trying to figure out whose car this is as she drives by. Yeah, I get people that drop cars off out front. They said it. Other tow companies bring cars into my lot. But you don't know that they're bringing them? They just come and drop them? I get somebody call me on Monday and says, hey, I'm bringing a car to you, and I don't see the car until the following Tuesday. I done forgot that guy even said he was bringing the car in until he walks in and says, here's my title. But then that becomes a problem for the neighbors. It, be, it becomes a problem for the neighbors, and I, I mean... And then as soon as we get to where we can <clears throat> know what those cars are, we get them out and take care of them accordingly. I can't just go and take your car and put it behind my fence that's Grand Theft Auto. I have to go through the steps of finding that, get a hold of the city, finding out who owns the car. You know, I usually try to give them five or seven days to find out who owns it to see if they show up with the title because I've had them come in. There. <coughs> I had one lady drop her car off throw her keys through the mail slot, went back to Peoria and mailed me the title. Well, that, that appears to be an operations problem that if you're going to run a business, then you need to have some type of yeah. operational procedures that would take that into consideration. I don't think that the neighbors should be held hostage because you don't have the operational procedure that would address that. But we do have on record the multiple reoccurring violations, and that's your responsibility, and that's my, that's my concern, and that's why I'm hesitant about voting for this. And most of those reoccurring violations is the cars outside the fence, and we've cured that. The only car that's outside the fence right now is one of the employees. Is it, oper is it operational? Yes, yeah, it's his personal vehicle. He drove it to work. <coughs> but he has been back in his personal vehicle for almost a week because he takes the tow truck home. And, and I, would, I would think that that's another violation because I don't think you can leave a car parked on the street that long. It's not on the street. And I'm working with the city right now to find out how we can change it because when we bought the property, it had concrete all out front. The concrete out front is anywhere from this much to this much you know, difference between the road. Base. And I found out afterwards, after I bought the property, that there was no permits to put that concrete in. So I'm now having to go in yeah. and correct that mistake. I have to break all that concrete out, get the proper permit, put it in the recommended depth, height, and thickness to make the approaches. I know. You know, I, I, I understand what you're saying, but when you buy property to run a business, you should check all that stuff out, and you're making money from the business, so you, you, you really need to have the operational procedures in place so that you're opportunity to make money from the business doesn't infringe upon your neighbor's rights to live in their neighborhood free of a junkyard. And the other thing is my neighbors said something to the driver. My dog got loose the other day. They called me personally. If the tow truck was that much of an issue, they have my personal cell phone number. They've had it since we've opened the business. They can <clears throat> dial the seven digits and say, hey, there's an issue here. They chose to bring it into here. Well, I said, to me, that is not an issue when you have an aisle. And the other neighbor, like I said, you know, the reason she's not here is because every time there's a problem, she hollers at me when she sees me. I go over, she tells me what it is, I correct it. But, and, and, I'm, and this is the last thing I'm going to say because I don't want to get into a back and forth with you, but the appropriate venue for their problem is here because if they did not bring it here so that it could be adjudicated one way or another, we would continue to have the reoccurring violations, we would continue to have the reoccurring issues. So I believe <coughs> this is the proper venue for their complaint. And that's the last thing I want to say. And as far as the weeds go, we let the weeds grow up along the fence. The grass gets cut. But we let the roaming vine go up just like you would around any other property 
to block people from seeing that. Alderman Simpson. <clears throat> I got a couple of issues, especially with your last statement. There are ways to block people from seeing in without weeds growing up. You could. It's a roaming vine. It's not actually a weed. It's a plant that most people use on. Uh, you can go out to Panther Creek and see them on the fences out there. Okay. This is not a weed per se. It's actually a roaming vine. But there are other methods that you can use as a business. If you if you're going to be a good neighbor, that you could use to uh, prevent people from seeing in, and it doesn't have to be a vine because. You can still see through vines. They're yes, not that thick, okay? I mean, there's coverings that you could weave through your fencing and to prevent that. Okay? I agree with and you. And you don't need to really respond to everything that I say. The other thing is, you know, you indicated that you, you're saying, I don't have any control over people who drop cars off in, in front of my building, my, my, my property. You should have, as a businessman, you should have a mechanism in place, and I agree with Alderman Turner. That in, so that people know that they can't just drop a vehicle off in front of your property, okay? You know, you don't even live in the area. How would you feel, how would your neighbors feel if this, something of, of this nature were put across the street from you? And I think you really don't need, you don't need to respond, but you need to really think about that. We're talking quality of life. We're talking property values. You're talking to ching to ching You're saying that I make more money dismantling these vehicles than doing something with them, getting rid of them whole. They <coughs> need about thousand dollars for their home, but if, I will if this- I for the if, appraisal to see if it is valued at that. See, you, you're, you're really being- I shouldn't have said that, but Alderman, Alderman I Lesko. know- I'm done, thank what, you. Alderman Lesko. Okay, what I'd like to do, Mayor, is I want to withdraw my uh, motion, and I'd like to hold this. I want to meet with, uh, the owner and the uh, you folks also and zoning and see if we can work something out on this uh, before we bring it back. So I'd like to withdraw. Okay. I know. Second. Oh, I yes, withdraw. Second. Okay. You want so to you motion to postpone for Most, yes for March, postpone. March 18th. March 18th. Okay. It's been a, a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion second to postpone uh, docket number 2014-002 until the uh, March 18th uh, zoning meeting. Alderman Turner. I just have a question. So with with this motion and the postponement, then does he continue, does he continue to um, dismantle or? He continues to operate till we. And ma'am, I haven't taken the car apart in over a month. I hauled the last that we're taking apart out at the beginning of the month. I haven't been in there to take cars apart in about three weeks. Okay. So I am but trying I to stay within the guidelines because I don't want to cause any more headache for you guys. But the yeah. car lot, it, it's stacking up with cars right now, waiting to burn the answer. There's a motion and a second discuss further discussion. I, my understanding was what you said was that when you opened the business, you thought it was legal for you to dismantle. And then when you found out it wasn't, when you I was filed the zoning. Could I finish? When you yes, filed, you, right? oh, no, it wasn't. You filed the zoning petition for relief so that you could do this legally, and that in the interim you were continuing to dismantle vehicles. Isn't isn't that what you told us earlier? Yes. But, so, but now you're saying you've stopped But three weeks ago, I stopped dismantling the car. So are you telling us that you're not going to dismantle anymore? Up. Are you telling us that you're not going to dismantle any more cars until this zoning petition is resolved one way or the I other? I am trying not to. Just, if I run out of room, I'm going to have to move them out. But right now, I am trying to do with when that I am trying to clean up the metal pile that is sitting there, which the weather has actually slowed me down on cleaning it up. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those um, in favor of the uh, motion vote yes, those opposed vote no to postpone to March 18th. Motion passes 7-3. Next item on the zoning agenda is docket number 2014-003 for property located at 1221-1241 Knoll Point Place. The petitioner is RSBR Investments LLC, a contract purchaser. The present zoning classification is an I-1 Light Industrial District, Section 155.040. The requested zoning relief is reclassification to B-1 
Highway Business Service District Section 155.033 to allow petitioner to construct and operate a retail sales dollar general store. Springfield Salmon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is to approve the petition as submitted for reclassification to a B1 Highway Business Service District Section 155.033. <coughs> Chair will entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to hold this for 30 days. Second. It's been moved and second to hold this until the uh, March 18th um, zoning meeting. Uh, discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Voting is now open. Motion passes 10-0. The next item on the zoning agenda is docket number 2014-004 for property located at 1106 East Ash Street. The petitioner is Rafiq Katoum. Yes. The, pr the present zoning uh, classification is a B1 Highway Business Service District, section 155.033. The requested zoning relief is a variance of section 155.098, retail or service establishments, 155.111, access to off-street parking facilities, and 155.114, regulations for location of off-street parking facilities to allow the petitioner to fix up this property and open up a convenience store and to allow two parking spaces instead of the four required to allow vehicles to back out onto the right-of-way and to allow parking in the required front yard. The Springfield Salmon County Regional Planning Commission recommendation is denial. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is to accept the staff's recommendation to deny the petition as submitted. The Chair will entertain a motion. Move to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation to deny the petition. Discussion. Is there anyone that wants to speak to the council on the issue? Hearing no discussion, all those uh, in favor of the motion to deny vote yes, those opposed vote no. Voting is now open. The motion passes 10-0. Final item on the zoning agenda is docket number 2014-005 for property located at 3200 Adley Stevenson Drive. Petitioner is the City of Springfield. The present zoning classification is an I-2 Heavy Industrial District, Section 155.041. The requested zoning relief is a variance of Section 155.300B7. General sign regulations, exempt signs, public information signs to exceed two square foot limit and to allow a total sign size of 3,485 square feet and 155.480K37 landscape screening and lighting of a sign to allow public information sign on the side of a boiler building. The sign will aid the public in locating the exit off I-55 into Springfield for the Lincoln sites. Springfield Salmon County Regional Planning Commission amended recommendation is approval. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is approval petition as submitted based on the staff's amended <coughs> recommendation for a variance of section 155.300B7. General sign regulations, exempt signs, public information signs to exceed two square foot limit and to allow sign size of 3,485 square feet and 155.480K37 landscape screening lighting of the sign. The sign will provide direction for the recommended entry into the city of Springfield to get to the Lincoln sites, thereby providing a community benefit. Sign shall uh, be shall be as is contained in the exhibit included in the petition and shall be limited to the following lang language. Visit Mr. Lincoln's hometown, Springfield, exit 98B. Chair will entertain a motion. Approve as filed. Second. second. Been moved and second to approve as filed. Uh, discussion? Uh, Mayor, Mayor, just a point of information. Uh, exit 98B is which exit? Uh, that would be the Clear Lake. Thank you. Uh, exit. Mayor, this is the mural sign on the new CWLP power plant. Is that yes. Correct? Mm -hmm. Further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Voting is now open. The motion passes 10 0. We will move into the regular uh, city council uh, agenda. We'll give Treasurer Langfelder the opportunity to uh, sit down and uh, get adjusted. And then we'll ask Treasurer Langfelder for a presentation of the financial report. Thank you, Mayor. The corporate fund monthly cash report for the month of January. We had a beginning balance of $8,036,685. 
Receipts for the month totaled seven million nine hundred twenty-four thousand eight hundred forty-five dollars. Disbursements for the month of January totaled ten million seven hundred eighty-nine thousand seven hundred thirty-nine dollars. So our ending cash balance at the end of January totaled five million one hundred seventy-one thousand seven hundred ninety-one thousand seven hundred ninety-one dollars. Chair, I entertain a motion to approve the financial report. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Hearing no discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Those opposed say nay. Aye. 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 Motion carries. The chair will recognize his chief utility engineer, Eric Hobby, of the Office of Public Utilities for a brief presentation regarding CWLP finances. <coughs> Emphasize the word brief. All right. <laughs> Well, this will be the same format as previous presentations, and we'll go through it pretty quickly here. Um, summary points, electric fund cash is negative again. Uh, it's typical. This is through December. We're getting October, November revenues, which are lower, plus we had some expenses related to outage, uh, unit four outages. The water fund cash is uh, positive and maintain a strong position there. On the electric fund, when you look at that, negative cash mainly comes from still we owe a line of credit of 1.6 million in the water fund payable. And this chart shows kind of the trend, uh, you know, summer revenues we trended up, we trended back down this month to a negative position. Looking at the sources of revenue, retail side, uh, that's still through December, 9.35 million under budget. And that was due to the mild summer revenues. Again, I think I've stated before, it's the lowest uh, electric usage we've had since 1996 this past summer. Wholesale revenues are over budget, uh, and that hopefully trend will continue. Electric fund expenses were still under budget significantly by about $14.8 million. If you look at the next slide, it's debt coverage. Uh, we slipped a little bit from last month, but we're still above the 1.25 and hope to end the year above that. Next slide shows the debt coverage month by month, and we're a little bit lower than last year, uh, but you know, trending similar to last year. Look at the water fund position. Again, as we talked about, it's in a favorable position, strong working cash, plus has a receivable due from the electric fund. Water fund cash, uh, you can see it kind of peaked out with summer revenues and declining a little bit as we go into the winter here. Expenses and revenues, you can see water sale revenues are actually a little bit under budget by $1.42 million, but expenses are uh, under budget by a larger percentage, helping out the financial position. You look at, again, the debt coverage on the water side, and we're above two, which is a strong position, again, to maintain. Labor budgets for both electric and water, both are under budget, 2.2 uh, and 3.8 percent, or combined 3.5. And then you look at the last page as pilot performance. We're still over budget on that, and about 10.5 percent. We've been staying steady with that. So from there, I'll take any questions. So the, you're saying the pilot, we've taken in more revenue under the pilot than we projected, you said. Is that correct? Yes. But our, over the past uh, few years, you've downgraded the projection based on you know, what our experience has been. Is that correct? Yes. But it, the pilot's based on the formula of actuals. So, but you know, compared to budget, yeah, our budget and wholesale sales we've taken down because, but and we're over budget this year as primary driver of that. We're over. We've sold more. Okay, okay. We've sold more wholesale electricity than we projected. Than the budget, yes. Mr. Hobby, do you have any idea what these figures will be in a couple of months, based on the winter we've had? Um, on the electric side, they should increase. And, you know. We definitely, we see a trend down in the winter months typically. We'll definitely stabilize with the recent cold snap. I mean, you know, people that have electric heat definitely seen increases in their bills and wholesale power prices have been favorable. So we should see probably a little bit of a positive trend over the next several months. Um, would there be any value in 
having these piles and piles of snow, and I know probably in the next couple of days they're going to start to melt, but I don't think they will all melt. Have them trucked to the lake? Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm concerned more about flooding than, than anything else, because if we get these warm days in a row, I know it's supposed to be through, and it's supposed to rain Thursday, that's uh, probably going to con contribute to our, our overflow sewers. Yeah, that, that's probably more of a public works question. As far as is it a problem putting into the lake, volume-wise, no. I mean, the amount of snow turned into water is, you know, not that big a deal. There, there may be concerns of, you know, there may be high salt concentrations and some other things that we would have to look into. But uh, as far as just putting in the lake, as far as volume, I, I don't see that as an issue. But you know, we can look into that. Mr. Mayor, yes, uh, also a, a city water line power question. Uh, uh, <coughs> our crews worked uh, deep hours yesterday and into the night uh, restoring power. Have we restored all power to our customers at this point? Yeah, everybody was restored a little after 10 o'clock last night. I think the, that was the last customer. Yeah, we had crews working out through the entire weather, and our guys did a very good job. And you know, that was electric, and the water guys have been working very hard for the past month or so. And, we're responding to a lot of water main breaks. Thank you. One more time. I would like to uh, offer the uh, congratulations and gratitude of everyone who co contacted me. Anyone who contacted me about a power outage, their power was restored within one to two hours. I had people who were very surprised and pleased at how quickly things turned around. Uh, your guys did a, a really good job. Yeah, uh, and there were a few people that were longer than one or two hours that had bigger problems, but yeah, our guys have been very responsive and they do take pride in restoring. And that's why our outage times are probably half of the industry in Illinois. So. Well, I, would, I have at least five different emails or phone calls where they specifically said to tell the, the linemen thank you. No, well, they definitely appreciate it. They, they earn it on those nights. Anything about bond ratings? What's that? Anything about bond ratings? Well, yes, I can talk about that. The uh, water fund was reaffirmed at an AA1 rating, which is uh, a very solid rating for the water fund, and it's, it was maintained at that. So you know, we're very happy to maintain that rating. That was announced today. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of ordinances into the record of this council meeting. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Those opposed say nay. Aye. aye. Motion carries. The chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the February 4th, 2014 city council meeting and approve the minutes. So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and second. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Those opposed say nay. Aye. 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 Motion carries. The chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the February 11th, 2014 special city council meeting and approve the minutes. So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Hearing no discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Those opposed say nay. Aye. 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 Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda into the record of this council meeting. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. <coughs> discussion. Hearing no discussion. Mayor, I'd make a request to remove 2014-57 from the consent and place it on the debate agenda. What is it? 2014-57, the, the contract for the demand analysis for the, of water. It, can we have a discussion on that? Is there a reason for removing it? You're, you're doing what, Alderman Kamen? What, what? I asked that it be removed. I asked that it be removed. And Alderman has a right to remove a. It's to put it on debate, is that correct? Not to hold yeah. it in committee, just to put it on debate? That's what I correct. Okay, thank you. I just want to minutes. clarify. Thank you. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Those opposed say nay. Aye. aye. Motion carries. The chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Discussion, Mayor. I'd like to, uh, Madam Clerk, I'd like to be recorded as a no vote on 2014-043. 2014-044, 2014-045. Those are liquor licenses having to do with uh, video gaming parlors. Thank you. Okay. 
Um, hearing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion vote yes, those opposed vote no. Voting is now open. Motion passes 10 0. Agendas number 2011 104, 2012 123, 2012 226, 2012 376, 2013 128. 2013 2013-2560, 2013-2650, 2013-2660, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2013-2650, 2
based on what the curve looks like of our usage. Okay. Further discussion? Well, I'll just I'm I'm going to you know I don't think we have adequate information, so if we <coughs> on this side, I'm going to uh, I'll be voting presence. Okay, no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion, uh, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Voting is now open. Motion passes 9-0 with one present. The next item on the agenda is 2014-063, an ordinance approving the appointment of Robert A. Brosh as Department Manager for Administrative Services for the Office of Public Utilities. The Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2014-063 on final passage. So moved. Second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Yes, Mayor. I'm going not going to be voting for this because as I said at the Committee of the Whole, the ordinance under which the manager is being appointed says specifically that the general manager of the uh, Office of Public Utilities shall uh, appoint the uh, manager of, uh, of this agency of the Administrative Services Department with the approval of the, of the mayor and the advice and consent of the City Council. Now there, there is no general manager of the Department of Public Utilities. So I don't think under our city code uh, this appointment is, is a proper appointment. Now I've uh, introduced a ordinance to amend the code to provide that the mayor himself, the mayor shall make the appointment, not the, not the uh, general manager of the Office of Public Utilities. I don't think any appointments uh, that come before the city council for approval should be made by anyone but the mayor. I don't think uh, department heads who are unelected should be appointing people whose, whose uh, appointments we have to approve. So uh, if that ordinance, if that proposed ordinance becomes law, becomes part of my our city code, I would have uh, probably a different position on this nomination. But under the current law, I cannot, uh, cannot vote for it. Further discussion? Norman Simpson? Mr. Mayor, I uh, will be voting no on this appointment, um, primarily because I believe that it's uh, unnecessary. Um, and I will speak later with regard to where I think staff ought to be, uh, primarily the library. Um, and I don't think this is money well spent. Uh, I think. Uh, it really kind of shows in my mind, and I, I would bet in the minds of uh, several citizens, many citizens, uh, lack of leadership in terms of putting forth uh, an appointment, this appointment, as opposed to looking very seriously at uh, doing something to extend the hours of the library. Further discussion? There are no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Voting is now open. Motion passes 7-2 with one present. The next item on the agenda is docket number 2014-064, an ordinance approving the appointment of Kenneth Winslow as chief of the Springfield Police Department. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2014-064 on final passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded uh, for passage. Discussion? Yes. Here. Edwards. We just uh, got some information and uh, I'd really like to hold this in committee, nothing against Ken Winslow, but I'd really like to be able to read the information we got until we vote. If that's not acceptable, then I guess we vote. But I just got forward some stuff today and would like to be able to ask about it. But if we don't want to do that, we could vote, I guess. Alderman yeah. Turner? Um, I, I tend to agree with Alderman Edwards. I received some information actually yesterday morning i sent um chief winslow an email asking for some comment mm -hmm. and it was a very short to the point email asking for some comment and i never got a response so i don't, i mean i don't know i'm not sure why i didn't get a response because chief winslow is usually very um you know quick about responding but i did not get a response and so it it's kind of concerning 
that I did not get a response. Further discussion? Mr. Mayor, should go? I, don't, I don't know if Alderman Edwards or Turner can. Is this something that we could discuss in executive session that might get their questions answered tonight, or do they, I don't know. Is that something we should do, or? I don't know, I mean, if, if the chief wants to speak on it, I, he has the email. I, I'll make the motion then. Second. Are we Second. prepared to go on executive session? We are always prepared. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, the chair would entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting of the city council for purposes of holding an executive session pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 2 of the Open Meetings Act covering section C1 personnel matters. I mean, I can ask my questions in public. I'm not embarrassed. Whatever you guys want to do, but so moved. Well, uh, Alderman Edwards, you, I, I thought you were making a motion to hold this in committee. Is that what you're intending to do? Well, I did. But <coughs> I, I asked for it to be held in committee, but well, if that's a motion, I, didn't I would. Well, we've got a motion. We've got a motion and a second over here for executive yeah. committee. I, I second your motion for it. Oh, you did. Mm -hmm. I did not hear that. Yeah. What, what did you say? No, he said he didn't get a second. I said I second, seconded. Well, then that, if you seconded his motion, then that would have come prior to the motion for the executive session. Alderman oh, Simpson? Uh, just a point of clarification. If the concern is the questions haven't been asked and answered, I'm sorry, not answered, and if we go into executive session and they're answered, then we can, can we come out and vote? Yeah. Or do you, is there more detailed information that you need. I guess it would depend on the answers yeah. to the question. Alderman so, Edwards, would you be willing to hold it till after the executive session? Your motion? I mean I can hold I can I can withdraw that motion if that's what you want to do. Why don't we just do it? You want to withdraw? Mm -hmm. Alderman Edwards. Did you withdraw? Yeah. Okay. I said I would. Okay. So we got a motion and a second for executive session. Here, no discussion. All those in favor, uh, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Voting is now open. The motion passes 6 5. We'll adjourn into.